Well, Maria, could you give us a running commentary? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Codford Stone Circle. Well, it was a stone circle, but today it's just an earthwork ground quite close to the military Salisbury Plain. Yeah, so this is actually a private road that we're on uh, as this recycling van lorry rather goes uh, goes past so what we're going to do is we're going to enter this uh, sacred site it's a site that hardly anybody knows about and hardly anybody visits so we can't see it today but we're on really high elevated ground on the Salisbury Plain well we're approaching the Codford Circle now like I said it had stones in it and we can just make out on the near horizon line a bank but in prehistoric times the bank in front of us would have been twice as big a huge bank like wall today with encroaching agriculture and we can still see that wheat is being grown here today it would have been twice as high and it would have looked quite magnificent so this is where we're going to we're going to go into one of the entrances and have a walk around the earthen circle because the megaliths have long been gone. Archaeologists say that this is attributed to the Iron Age and that's the kind of Celtic Druidic period from 750 BC to the time of the Roman invasion. But it can't be. It's exactly the same as a henge monument in other parts of Wessex. So I think that this is an Iron Age. It was reused by the Iron Age Druidic priesthood, probably for astrology and astronomical purposes because you have a 360 degree celestial view from the Codford Circle. I think it is um, date is to the Bronze Age and that's what we're going to have a look at. The, the ditch and the bank feature which is nearly eroded away and walk around the circle 360 degrees. So, if that's if that's north, south, yes, yeah, kind of just off east west actually, isn't it? It's not east west proper. We'll have a have a look like when we're there. It is, it is east-west. It's a good east-west alignment. So that means because it's uh, an east-west uh, alignment, it aligned to the spring equinox and the autumn equinox. That's a good east-west entrance, which in prehistoric times, imagine that you could see the sunrise and the uh, sunsets at that time would have been truly spectacular. Now we can see the circular curvature of this amazing henge bank. And the stones, if we walk forward, they would have probably been around here going around in a massive circle. I mean, I think it was probably of blue stones because the blue stone is used for Stonehenge and this is in alignment with Stonehenge just uh, over there, about seven miles on a huge long lay that has a massive amount of earth energy being released from it in the Codford Circle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk what's called sunwise. That's always as the sun goes round because to walk it uh, anti-clockwise in true Celtic ways is called Widdishins and it brings bad luck so I can walk clockwise. because they drag up the, the tiny little animal called the mole, pieces of debris that have been brought from the old surface level up to the modern surface level. But if we want to get down to the Neolithic period here, or the Bronze Age period, we have to go down a couple of meters because if you went down a meter, you probably hit the Roman period, go down even deeper, and you'll start hitting prehistoric times. Now, what I found here is an actual piece 
bits of stone. It isn't flint. It could be a part of uh, pottery. Now that I've kind of rubbed it a bit, I can feel that this is man-made going round the side because it's got a curvature. It could have come from some kind of cooking utensil or ritual uh, cauldron utensil. But nonetheless, what we can get is a lot of evidence dragged up from beneath the ground by the mould. When I come to the ancient sites off the beaten track, like here at Codford, it really does sadden me because look, all today that exists is this small bump, if I say, in the ground. But this was a henge monument, like Avebury and Stonehenge fame. And this was a huge earthen bank, six feet to ten feet high, with a big ditch. The ditch is gone to agriculture, and this is all that is left today. These are our sacred sites. This is our heritage. It is our spiritual heritage. And we need to save and visit these monuments and remember the old gods, the old ways, and the wisdom of our ancestors. We're walking clockwise around this massive circle. And it makes me think, you know, are you going to see Merlin any moment? And when you get to an ancient site, I really do suggest that you really walk around the monument and try to feel the spirit of place, the kind of ancient energy therein. And that's what we're doing. We're going to walk around the site. Then we're going to go to the esoteric centre, the heart of the monument, and feel for its energies very strongly. This is close to military land as well. Salisbury Plain's not that far away. But here's the thing about this sort of site. It can really help you manifest, attune to the past, and to sometimes get total inspiration from the spirit of place, like a download. And that's what happened to me quite a few years ago. I was up here thinking about the astronomy of the Druids, and the next minute, massive download. So we can really link into an ancient site to find out its spiritual past and its holy history. I recommend it. <laughs> Where we are now on the perimeter of the Codford Circle is we're quite close to an earthwork which is right in front of me now. This earthwork I feel in antiquity would have been much higher and it's like a platform, like a ceremonial platform so you could look into the centre of the monument. So if we just carefully go up here because all of the vegetation is dead at this time of the year, looks like there's a modern day pipe here today and modern uh, influences but before this was clearly more I think that's actually a radar yeah that's this radar. yeah but this was originally a mound on the old and and on the old maps this was a mound it's been reused in modern times but to look how it's being reused not sacredly not ceremonially it's almost as if it's tried to disempower it through, through the metal and through the drainage system. So if we looked at old maps, we could see that this was in all probability a Bronze Age barrow, at the very least, that could have been used as a ceremonial platform. Today, it is nothing really more than a, a pile of weeds. And is this how we're going to be treating our sacred sites? Is this how we should have treated our sacred sites? I think if we speak from our heart minds, it is no, no, no. Ho, 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 did Maria say no, no, no? All around this area, we have to visualize not agriculture, not the winter wheat that is being planted out, but more and more barrows, round barrows, gleaming chalk white like the celestial stars above, and around Stonehenge in two gigantic circles more than 800 mounds and today only a handful of those exist so as we look out today we see agricultural fields this was a ceremonial landscape that was used by our ancestors created by our ancestors and left for our heritage today this is what I mean about the abuse of our ancient sites. As Miles Johnson and I are walking around this site, we're just seeing dumped tires here. It is an outrage how these are being used today. One thing that's really baffled archaeologists about prehistory is the people. 
Where did the people go, is what Miles Johnson's just asked. And it has baffled archaeologists, because when you look to the ancient landscape, you have a lot of long barrows. For example, 69 long barrows survive and surround Stonehenge. And you had a lot of round barrows. But it didn't register the amount of people that actually lived and worked around the prehistoric times. So where did they all go? Because it's not uh, represented in the, de the amount of deaths there. It's a small proportion. Archaeologists will tell us and inform us, oh, that's because they were the... The elite, only the elite went into the mounds. But I think, where are the people? Where did they go? That's a mystery in itself. Well, the important thing here is where are the people? What's happened to them? And why are we here trying to remember this amazing energy? And maybe we need to find out more, investigate more, and give Maria Wheatley a 16 series, 14 week TV series and a Christmas special every year. Well, we've walked ceremonially around the perimeter, asking ourselves about sacred sites today. And I came here only in the summer with Pierre Orleans, who's an American author, and she channels the Pleiadians. And she's a good voice for celestial communications. And I wanted to go to the heart of this centre, to the esoteric centre, to call in its energy to, to help me and to help others and hopefully to help uh, Gaia herself. And I am shocked at what I am seeing. I'm seeing in front of me some kind of hut that people may be living in or doing something from. It's in a kind of army green colour. And in front of me, I'm seeing toilet paper. And over to my right, I'm looking at plastic bottles just strewn. And may I remind us where we are? We're at a sacred site. And is this what we do to our sacred sites? Or some of us, who is living in this van? Let's go and find out. Let's knock on the area. This moved. This has probably been here, creating this all this dead vegetation. And now this trailer thing uh, is being moved along. Shocked. Truly shocked. There seems to be another kind of barrel thing over, over there. So here we are. This is the, the kind of near, near centre. Uh, this is a, a modern day concrete uh, post that I think is uh, some kind of trig point because we're on very high elevated, uh, elevated ground. So it's, it's a shame that the Codford Circle has had this intrusion here today. Piece of ballast from the road. We we'll match it up, or it could be something else. I think it's ballast from the road being dragged up. Well, uh, this is Energy 106, a light station. We called our pirate stations light stations. What do you feel? Do you feel that it's been used for dark purposes here now? Well, I came here today to what I thought was a beautiful ancient site, a circle created by our prehistoric ancestors in the Bronze Age and reused by our Druidic seers and ancestors of the Iron Age. And I came here just in July, and it was wonderful. It felt light. It felt if anything was possible at the Codford Circle. And yet today I've been here, and we have seen that it has been abused. It's got that cabin in there. The energy has changed. People are walking around that sacred circle with the shins, anti-clockwise, which is negative behavior. Are they using it for shooting, killing animals there? I mean, this is our heritage, this is our spiritual past and ways that we can tune in to ancient sites. And it saddens me very much that this beautiful Druidic site has been abused in the way that it is.